Increased productivity, that's the only way the country's economy will grow. The government is very much aware of this and is pushing for expansion in areas like entrepreneurship. So, if you have a business idea, don't allow fear to prevent you from taking that step that could lead to a million dollar success. Hi there, I'm Adrian Atkinson and we'll be talking about business on today's issue of Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for joining us. Coming up, a discussion with the industry minister. Jamaica has moved up eight places on the Global Competitiveness Index. Minister Hilton will tell us what that means. Also on the show, workshops to sharpen your business skills. Those features and so much more in today's package. Householders, business people, school administrators, protect yourself and your children from the chikungunya virus. Be on the alert. Help control the mosquito population. Chikungunya is a virus transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which breeds in and around your home, workplace, and school. Destroy breeding sites. Empty old tires and all other containers where water can settle. Bore holes in old cans. Cover water drums and garbage cans. Wash flower pots and vases and clean pet dishes regularly. Protect yourself from mosquito bites. Cover your body as much as possible and use mosquito repellent containing DEET. And if you're experiencing symptoms of chikungunya, a sudden high fever, headache, rash, nausea, pain, stiffness, or severe joint pains, see your doctor or go to the nearest health center. Do you want to know more about the Jamaica Logistics Sub-Initiative? What of the proposed transshipment port at Goat Islands? Or the jobs to be provided when the hub is fully implemented? Then sign up for the Logistics 101 training course. This free course is available when groups or organizations make a request. The Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce website, the Logistics of Task Force, and you can register. As long as you have a cohort, we'll take it to you. Increase your awareness about logistics. Call 968-7116. Ever heard of the Global Competitiveness Index? It's a system set up by the World Economic Forum to rank countries based on the factors that determine their productivity and ultimately their level of prosperity. The latest report shows that Jamaica has improved evidence of the progress we're making both in the public and private sectors. Among the areas of improvement, labor market efficiency, which has to do with employee relations and the hiring and firing practices of companies. Up next, Industry Minister Anthony Hilton puts it all into context. Thanks for joining us for Issues and Answers. I'm Ian Boyne. Today we speak to the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, the Honorable Anthony Hilton. And he'll be talking to us about Jamaica's improved ranking in the Global Competitiveness Report, as well as our progress in the attraction of investment and the building of a strong investment profile in Jamaica. We thank you for your company. Minister, good to have you on. Always a pleasure to be with you. I know you're delighted at our recent improvement in the annual Global Competitiveness Report um, ranking. Well, the country needs to be, all of us needs to be, because it really is an affirmation of the steady focus and the progress of the work being done. And I think it's not a blip at all. Not at all. And I, I find what is significant and what I, what I would um, ask um, your viewers to, to look, look at is the steady rise um, and consistent rise in the index, which really, as I indicated to you before, um, and as I've written, is not a surprise to us mm -hmm. at the ministry or in government because... What has been done to... Because a number of things we have clearly, I think the strategy and the strategy focus is correct. I think that's what it affirms, which is to fo focus and the center um, much of the work we do around logistics and logistics related okay. activity and now we're not just speaking about the hub oh. the hub is a specific um, uh, kind of undertaking yes. we're really talking about logistics and the role of logistics in building an economy such as ours small need to be linked into the global 
economy um, and with the endowment factors that we have of deep ports and airports and possibilities um, for operating special economic zones. Mm -hmm. All of these um, come together to provide us with an opportunity to move our industrial development to another stage. And so we have been focused on that and with the developments that are taking place in the business environment because the logistics, again, is about competitiveness. It speaks about the ease and speed of doing business. Yes. The role for ICT, information communication mm -hmm. technology, and of course, a quality standard infrastructure, mm -hmm. which we believe are key mix, mm -hmm. key mix of policies and institutions mm -hmm. that are necessary to drive a sustained competitiveness. But Minister, what has government been doing concretely to deal with the reduction in bureaucracy, the reduction in red tape, and the ease of doing business. What what is being done? Really? Well, I, I specifically I will I remind you, and I, I I can I can predict again by virtue of what I what I'm expounding here today, which is about the strategy mm -hmm. being employed by the government. I, I I'm not even sure the ease of ease of doing business report for 2015 2016 is finished. But when that is out, I can predict We're improve the rise in the, in the rankings. Yes, we, I can predict that oh. because again there are specific measures that are being taken. And I just need to advert to you and your audience to the security interest in personal property and the collateral registry. Yes. What that is doing to the, the, the business environment, but more particularly um, the, business, um, the business formation aspects at the com company's office. Yes. It's now down to four days or less. Online, you can form a company within four days or less, and we're okay. moving to make it one or two days. Mm -hmm. So that's a concrete yes, a expression as, as, as to where we're going and, yes. and, and we're moving. There's still work to be done, to mm -hmm. be sure. Mm -hmm. The matter of electricity, I know work is being done at MSTEM to reduce that whole measure in the e e doing business report. And the cross-border um, aspects, which is one of the areas we perform not so well on over the years, the amount of work that is being done is significant with the port security system, the Asakuda system at customs, oh, and now oh. a single window system that is being piloted by the trade board under my ministry. Mm -hmm. All of it focused on ensuring that we, with the e-commerce, if you will, or the, the mm -hmm. ICT backbone, we can address some of the, the, the bureaucracy, some what of the lack of transparency. And the approval process. Moving things through smoothly, creating yeah. a really yeah. one-stop operation, yeah. Minister. Well, in order to do that, uh, you, you have to move to an electronic platform mm -hmm. to simplify that process and so that things move on a platform rather than by foot or hand yes. through the system. But, but what are we doing with that? And that's the backbone I was just talking, talking about, about mm -hmm. that we're building out. And mm -hmm. it's really an electronic infrastructure, um, infrastructure that mm -hmm. we're putting in place. And the approval process while it doesn't fall under me directly, by virtue of my chairmanship of the National Competitiveness Council, mm -hmm. we get to have sight on that and mm -hmm. focus on that as an area for critical improvement. Mm -hmm. So we, there is a process between the Ministry of Water, La Land, Environment, and Climate Change uh -huh. and local government, yes. um, to which they are the main drivers, but um, JAMPRO, which is the secretary for the National as representation. As representation and and oversight mm -hmm. in, of it and, and urges um, action in that area. And there are other areas. The whole area of procurement is another area. It doesn't fall under my ministry, but by virtue of chair, my chairmanship of the National Competitiveness Council, uh -huh. I have a, a line of sight um, and, and, and really um, being yes. able to push them yes. in that process. So that what we have, in effect, is a joined-up government. Yes. And the National Competitiveness Council mm -hmm. provides the platform on which we are able to have line of sight and the various activities. And while we don't have a czar, and I personally don't believe we need a czar, <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I don't think we need a czar because czars, people don't like czars. Yes, that's generally. Right. That has been the history. And, but more importantly, it, it really sends a false impression because mm -hmm. there are still checks and balances uh, legally. Yes. And a, a czar can't simply obliterate what is yes. legally yes. Um, 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 restricted or constraining. You really have to build it through reason and collaboration. So what we need is a joined up government, yeah, it's critical. government that is working uh, cohesively. In symmetry and coherently. Yes. yes. The Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Honorable Anthony Hilton, speaking to us about what is happening in the area of 
of industry and areas under his portfolio. We have improved in our rankings in the Global Competitiveness Report. That's a positive thing. We talk more about that when we come back from our break. Understand. Productivity is the way to go for all us Jamaicans. Small business, big business, small and young, we are telling every woman and man. We want growth and prosperity for your better nation with a building plan. So we can build our product and sell our product and put more money in our hand. Our economy can rise to a level and build a better nation. Productivity to move forward on this land. Productivity, that's the way to go, we should understand. Productivity to move forward. Productivity, pathway to prosperity. A message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Welcome back. We're speaking to the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, the Honorable Anthony Hilton. And a number of things have been going right under his portfolio. Uh, one of the other areas also, Minister, is the uh, investments. Investments have, have improved um, significantly. The World Investment Report has mentioned that. And also there's a logistics report mm -hmm. that also um, reported favorably on Jamaica. Let's talk about that. Well, I, I think what is important is even as we look at the competitiveness report as a s standalone, it really doesn't, in, in actuality, it really exists in a context and in an ecosystem, really, which is that, again, the beginning with the focus and the strategy that we're employing around logistics, not necessarily logistic hub, although the logistic mm -hmm. hub is a specific expression of it, but, the, but logistics in general. We saw where the logistic performance index moved Jamaica up. 50 points, um, the largest Trump ever made on that index. 50 points? 50 points. Um, significant. And persons were, at the time in the society, saying, well, that's a fluke. And uh -huh. We knew it was not, because, again, it mm. affirmed the kind of focused attention we were putting um, on it. But we, it also um, informed us, and we were pretty certain that that would begin to have a positive correlation with the other indices, mm -hmm. um, including the investment um, report um, and as well competitiveness report and as I've indicated to you I'm, I'm very certain that when the next ease of doing business report the World Bank the report, World Bank report mm -hmm. that too will move we positive. will do well investments have moved yes yeah. uh, and we have done significantly mm -hmm. in comparison to the pre-crisis um, era of, of 2008 indeed in pre pre-crisis we had come down we had been reduced to um, investment levels of 200 million or, yes, or less. Yes. Um, in the latest report, we moved beyond half a billion. Over 500 million now? Yeah, and we contended even then that it did not capture fully mm. what was happening in the, in, in the economy. So we are fairly confident that it's mm -hmm. above the half a billion level and moving towards a billion in foreign investment. But mm. with the logistic hub, all I'll say at this juncture is that I think we stand to see far more significant investments. What do you say about those who say, we have been talking about the hub, what have we seen concretely? I mean, when are we going to see something in the ground? Well, I, I, I'll say this to, I'll say this to those <laughs> of your listeners. I'll say this. I'm beating you, yes. Yeah, I'll say this. Um, something is before coming. you pour cement, yes. you need to prepare the ground. Okay. Uh, we are preparing the ground well. We, we are moving now to deal with the special economic zones, yes. which really has to address what we have now, which is an archaic free zone system, oh. which is which which by WTO requirement yes, yes. must be phased out by December of this year. Yes. That's not a platform on which you can attract the level of investment. Oh. So we have had to renovate that old system of incentive, and we've the special economic zone legislation that is um, policy and legislation, uh -huh. which is far advanced, um, will replace that. But the investors are simply ensuring that we have the right things in place. Um, the, we need to build out, for example, we have said in, in the incentive legislation that we have a focus on the large scale and strategic industries. Mm -hmm. That has been settled, but we need now the regulation, specific regulation to underpin that concept and to define 
the parameters for doing that. But even so, the Kingston Wharf is moving ahead. They're investing over 100 million US in expansion of their facilities. And they'll tell you very clearly that that is the logistic, the hub effect um, for them. And they're moving ahead. We know what, where we are in the KCT privatization. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said before, from where we sit, we know of the continuing strong interest um, in every aspect of the logistics. Yeah. The mobile business clinic, Minister, has just been uh, launched um, recently. How significant do you see this? Very significant because we, have, we, we are engaged now in perhaps one of the most intense period of reform this country has ever undertaken. And with that reform, there are new programs, new ideas, new information. And we need a platform, national platform, not just specific to a ministry or a region, but a national platform in which to engage the public at large. Mm -hmm. And again, not only the traditional private sector and the population, the narrow focus around yes. Kingston and Montego Bay, yes. we really do need a platform that penetrates yeah. um, the, the entire country, in the nooks and cranny of Jamaica, where we know there are good entrepreneurial ideas, um, entrepreneurship, a lot of creativity um, in, out in the interland. And so we have to engage them explaining and educating on the reform measures that we're putting in place. So the mobile business clinic will do it? Yes, will mobile do business clinic will, apart from doing the business advisory yes. services and the hand-holding exercise, uh -huh. is also to educate on oh. these critical reform measures. It will do that too. The insolvency yeah. bill that is coming, that is very yeah. imminent. Um, will be critical to particularly the MSME sector. Mm -hmm. um, this, the security interest in personal property, the registry, the reform at the company's office, other reform measures in tax, and throughout government, mm -hmm. it will take on board that platform because it's not a single agency um, matter. It's a multi-agency. What, what JBD, what is anchored at JBDC, which is Jamaica Business Development Corporation, under my ministry, is the platform. But that platform will be used by multiple mm -hmm. sources to carry the message. And the real, the real benefit of it is its national scope and okay. focus. In terms of financing for the MSME sector, yeah. Minister, is government doing enough? No. I have, without hesitation, I'll say no. But government doing a lot, though. Yes, we are. Um, and more needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And I, I can assure you, we have, for the first time, one of the things that I was very pleased and still very proud to have accomplished was the, was the, the, the launch of the MSME Entrepreneurship Policy, oh. which is the first in the history of our country to frame the sector in, a, in, in, in very deliberate ways mm -hmm. and to indicate the areas in which government's intervention in the sector will help to support that sector. Okay. And I want to commend to your readers, if they haven't, your listeners and watchers, if they haven't already read it, they must go online to the Ministry of okay. Industry, Investment and Commerce, our okay. website, has the entrepreneurial policy, the, the, the MSME what policy and an entrepreneurship online. policy. Mm -hmm. Very, very critical to developing and sustaining the micro um, investment sector, micro, small and medium sized investment mm -hmm. sector, which we say a lot about it and we talk every day that that is a driver of employment and economy, but quite frankly, we have not done enough mm -hmm. to ensure that that is so. We have not invested as much as we need to invest in that. But you are determined to change we, that. We, yes, indeed. We are mm -hmm. determined to do that. And it's not simply about um, providing loans. We need to look at the venture capital. We really need to look at the life cycle needs yes. of these small enterprises because it, 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 it is counterintuitive that you start a business, the business is weak, and just developing and at the same time you're loading it with debt. Mm -hmm. I mean it's not it's not likely to be a business That's particularly right. particularly if it's in the productive sector yes. where you know there are challenges and there are risks mm -hmm. involved with it. So what we have to do and, and to that end I'm reforming the micro investment sector under my ministry, which comprises the JBDC, Jamaica Business Development uh -huh. Corporation, MIDA, people may have forgotten about that yes. self start. Yes. We have rationalized their activities, merge we in the process of merging entities so that we get a very lean and efficient bureaucracy but it has to supply the critical services to the MSME sector. Thank you very much Minister. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce Honorable Anthony Hilton speaking to us about important areas under his portfolio. Next week we'll be back. Until then Ian Boy wishing you a pleasant day.
Jamaicans, let's celebrate our wonderful tourism industry, which has brought millions to our shores. It's Tourism Awareness Week 2014, September 21 to October 1, and the theme is Tourism and Community Development. Activities include Jamaica Product Exchange 2014 at the Montego Bay Convention Center, a Community Tourism Fun Day at the Milk River Hotel and Spa in Clarendon on September 27, a Tourism Awareness Week church service in Ocherios on September 28, and a Community Tourism Familiarization Tour in the Cockpit Country Trelawney on October 1. Students and teachers can also get involved as there will be trips to hotels, villas and attractions. To know more about Tourism Awareness Week, call the Ministry at 920-4926-30. Do you have a hobby that you'd like to turn into a business? Then visit the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the entrepreneur's one-stop shop. Watch this next feature on the JBDC Skills Training Workshop. This government is determined to create the environment that will yield decent paying jobs for workers in the logistics center. An important part of that is building the capacity of businesses within the productive sector so they can generate more employment options. The Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the JBDC, is leading government's intervention in this area. We are empowering our small businesses with technical skills, knowledge and confidence. This fiscal year, the JBDC is doing that through its capacity building workshops, which provide targeted intervention for entrepreneurs. The objectives of the workshop is really to get uh, entrepreneurs up to speed with the relevant specificities of the particular industry um, and, and certainly training them how to be entrepreneurs as well and take advantage of these, of these particular opportunities. The initiative is not new but has been revamped to ensure that entrepreneurs are keeping up with current global workforce trends. The workshops cover critical technical matters that can build the managerial and operational outputs of a company. Our workshops are tied to our overall work plan in terms of what our yearly objectives are. And what we try to do is to have a, an integrated approach to workshops. So we tend to have sessions teaching persons about intellectual property, um, teaching persons about building your brand, teaching them how to properly cost and price your products, how to market your products, how to operate your business, your business operations more efficiently. So they become more integrated. This year's workshops are introducing some unique elements that reflect emerging global trends, like programs in paper flora creation, sand beading, jewelry making, and lavishly leather sandals making. We have also coming up a series of baking workshops and bake product workshops, cake decorating um, workshops. Normally towards the end of the year, we have a, a food workshop, which is about doing you know, all the wonderful cakes and stuff for Christmas and so on. So we have a quite a wide range of workshops. These capacity building workshops are responding to the government's strategic focus on job creation and economic growth. A person would, would have come here probably doing something as a hobby or just as an interest to hear about a workshop when they come here and they would now transition into being their own business owner. We have also seen where we have in other workshops where we have taught people skills. For example, we have had leather craft workshops and sandal making workshops in the past where participants from those workshops have become employees of established um, shoe making and sandal making entities. So we see it as a direct contributor of employment creation um, where persons can now use their skills to either seek employment with a local company or to use those skills to expand their own um, employment. A detailed calendar of the workshops can be found on the JBDC's website, jbdc.net. 
You can also call the Corporation's Incubator Resource Center at 758-3966 or 758-3966. Stop. Think before you burn. The dry season is on, so there's little to no rainfall and wind speeds increase around this time too. What if the fire you light gets out of control? Where would you get the water to out the flame? Why not try bagging up waste and putting it outside for collection? If you absolutely must burn, construct a fire break by clearing an area around the site to be burnt. Use water to wet the perimeter of the brush being burnt. Burn in small piles and be sure to burn one pile at a time. If no water is available, ensure you have some dirt to douse the fire. Remember, take stock of yourself and think before you burn. Today's United Nations International Day of Peace being celebrated throughout the world under the theme, The Right of Peoples to Peace. Many local groups have organized events for today. As you reflect on the theme and its significance, let's pray for peace in our families, in our communities, in our country. We here at the JIS invite you to celebrate Peace Day by reaching out to estranged family members or by doing a good deed for someone you don't know. Let's also remember our neighbors in the Middle East. As part of the day's activities, the United Nations is asking peace-loving people all over the world to pray for peace in the Middle East. And in our own communities, embrace the spirit of kindness and love. Let's all work together to make this country and the world a better place. We hope you enjoyed today's program and found the information useful. If you'd like additional details such as information on the Global Competitiveness Index, click on jis.gov.jm for videos and stories. If you have a Twitter account, follow us at JIS News. And for your comments or suggestions, drop us a line at Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Have yourselves a wonderful day. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.